Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Keith. How are you, Sharon? I'm wonderful. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you. Everything's good? It's been a while. <laughs> That's a long time exercising. You and the you and the lady. <laughs> we doing our best. We hanging in there. Well, hello everybody. Uh, we're going to get started so shortly with our team meeting. Uh, we're uh -huh. waiting on the rest of our panelists. We have Sharon Parker. We're also going to have uh, Dan Goon and Winona Smith joining us this morning to share their knowledge, their wisdom regarding short sales. Uh, as you know, uh, COVID-19 has had a major impact on the everything. So I would be doing it a disservice if I was to say limited to just one thing but it's had a major impact and we could be looking at a point where we may be encountering more short sales as we move forward in the third and fourth quarter. And we wanted to share some of the folks, some of the expertise of some of the agents in our office that have had a lot of experience with short sales. So uh, right now we have Sharon and okay, here comes Winona. Hey Winona, how are you today? You ladies have had uh, experience with short sales. If you, if you give us a little bit of background uh, regard, you know, we know you've been in the business for a while, but give us a, 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 some background, maybe, you know, how long or how many years or how many short sales have you encountered or how long you've been working with short sales so folks can get an idea of, you know, your, your vast knowledge of short sales. Sharon? Uh, I've been in business for 20 years this year, and I started short sales when I started in business. Okay, excellent. and it was never uh, called short sales. It was just was a hardship way of helping sellers uh, be able to sell their home right now uh, and to get out of it so that they didn't have to go into foreclosure. Okay, okay. What about you, Winona? Well, actually, um, I have been in the business since 2007. And I was actually, um, when I started, there was a gentleman at the broker where I was, that's all he did was short sales. And I was like, well, what is a short sale? So then I started referring him my short sales. Okay. And I came to Keller Williams in 2011. And as Sharon said, she was, her and Christina were the short sale gurus. And I kind of helped Sharon one time when she went out of town and it was like, okay, I can do this. But then for me, I ended up going with, Sharon actually worked her short sales. I almost caused a family to go in foreclosure. So I started working with an attorney's office. I would get the short sales, but then they would actually do the work on the short sale. Okay, excellent. All right, so that's, that, that's great because we get two different perspectives on the whole thing. All right, so one of the things I'd like you to do for our audience is some people may not be aware. Um, if you could explain exactly to everyone listening, exactly what is a short sale? Hey, Dan. Wait a second, Dan's joining us. So let me uh, get a few things together. Dan, you're, can you hear me now, Dan? I hear you perfectly, okay. thank you. All right, before we <laughs> jump into that question, Dan, I, the one, the same question I asked the ladies here, um, give, give the audience a little bit of your background and you know how long you've been working with short sales and some of your knowledge on the subject? Yeah, um, like uh, Winona and Sharon, my partners here, we've been in the business a while. I sort of got into short sale, not on purpose, but through my client. They were in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been in the business since along with Sharon about the same time. For, we joined around 2000. Uh, okay. I've always been with Keller Williams. And... Um, and I guess in 2007 or so, uh, my client called me and said, hey, Dan, I'm in trouble uh, with my uh, mortgage. And, uh, and let's just say he owes uh, 100000 for a property that is worth 100000 but he owes like 120 or 115 That was sort of like backwards. I said, wow. Uh, so he over leveraged and then the market went sort of bad and he only been there a little bit. And uh, the only way we could do it really was... Uh, uh, talk to his mortgage company uh, to see if we could do a short sale on his property. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. You answered the question I had on the floor. So basically for everyone listening is, basically you, you said you have a seller that needs to sell, but the amount they owe 
on the property to their lender exceeds what they can get for yes. it in the marketplace. Uh, it, okay. it, there's really no room for no money for him or or us, really, the realtors. Okay. All right. So that's excellent. That leads me right to um, my next situation um, or question. Every lender has different criteria for a short sale. And so in those situations, what are some of the circumstances that a lender will be open to even consider this situation? Um, so I'm going to go over, you know, um, let's start with you, Sharon. What, what, what would be a situation where a lender would be, okay, I'm willing to talk to you, Mr. Se Mr. and Mrs. Seller? Well, Keith, first let's, get, let's have the full understanding that a short sale is the lender's forgiveness. Okay. A, a portion of, uh, uh, or to lower the loan amount or um, in order for a property to be sold on the market at, at market value. Okay. okay. Excellent. So let's make sure everybody understands that that it uh, what a short sale is. Mm -hmm. Now behind the um, uh, payment, uh, behind on payment is one of the reasons they may uh, okay. lost a uh, job, uh, uh, death of a spouse, uh, divorce. And, you know, and every circumstance is different. So okay. based on that, you know, just cause what we name that they will give you a chance to do short sale does not mean they will, because it always determines the investor that has your, the loan. Okay. All right. The so investor is the one that gives that right. It's not Bank of America, Chase, whoever, whoever. It's the investor. So whoever owns that loan is the one that's going to have to be the one to feel sorry for you. Gotcha. Okay. All right. If Perfect. they don't, then it doesn't matter what Chase or any of the rest of them may say. Gotcha. All right. So Winona, here's a question. If I, let's just say, you know, I'm in that situation, I'm the seller. Um, I just bought the house last year and I don't like the house anymore and I want to sell, but I owe 150. It's only valued at hundred K. Do I have a shot at getting my case through? Yes, it, it all depends on how complete you put your packet together. And I've had clients in that situation. And I always say they're going to ask you to write a hardship letter. So okay. um, sometimes, you know, as Sharon mentioned, it could be a death, divorce. But I had a particular client who got sick and was off work for three to four months and, could, you know, no income coming in, couldn't afford to pay, apply for the modification because you can apply for a modification and the bank will look at it. And as Sharon said, the investor, um, it's up to the investor. The investor will say, yes, they'll do a modification and not do a modification. But in this young lady's case, she had already had one modification. So another modification was not gonna help her because she didn't have the income. And so we were able to get the bank to agree to do a short sale, um, but again, the success of the short sale that I find, the ones that I did is how well you complete your packet. All right, so I hear two things. Um, you both brought up very distinct circumstances. It wasn't just a willy-nilly decision that was accepted by the, uh, by the end lender. Bear with me one second. Hey, Dale, let me uh, get things under control here. Okay, bear with me. Hey, Whitney, come. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Oh All right. So, <laughs> so uh, I, it has to be a, a real compelling reason, not just a willy-nilly decision that I, I'm going to be able to walk away from this thing. No, because you actually have to provide your pay stubs. You have to provide tax returns. You know, they want to make sure that you're not just trying to get a short sale. Okay. to just get out of paying your mortgage if you are able to pay it and the records your pay stubs and all that add up because i've had that happen where they say oh no on paper this guy looks like he can afford the house okay gotcha all right so that leads me to my next point um you mentioned the package dan talk to talk to us you mentioned a couple of things a hardship hardship letter and the package um, kind of give us some details on what that, well, 
as you talk with a client and you clients, you realize they need a short sale. How do you consult them on these things? What are some of the things you lay out as to what's going to happen? Give us an example of how you consult someone that's looking and at like, short sale. I like Sharon, I noticed that each bank is a little different. I'm going to stress that. And just because we had done these short sales, it's a new day and it's a new time now. So what happened then probably will be different now because even when we were doing the short sales back then, the banks were changing the rules regularly on us. So you got to be cautious of that and touch bases with them regularly. Uh, minimum once a week okay but uh basically uh i think like everyone that you're gonna sort of like give them a brief I, I, outline about what to expect uh because really uh we're only as smart as the, that particular lenders are, are, are willing to play ball and allow us to know mm -hmm. uh so and then you you have to get um uh, uh, I guess authorization to represent uh, your clients uh, to the bank because it's really their mortgage, really, and you you're just the agent. You don't have, so you have to get that sign off, and then uh, the the ball games begin as far as when you be able to talk with them and, and do because they don't want to talk with you as an agent. They want to talk with the person, but once you get authorized, it, it gets the ball rolling. Okay, so let, let's step let's step this back. You guys are you guys are talking, and I understand what you're saying because I've done a few myself. But the lay person out there listening to us, you guys are dropping a lot of knowledge in just some brief statements. So let's let's break it down into steps. So you met with the client, you found out it's a short sale necessary, and you're laying out the situ you know the different situations that can be considered. As tell, what are you telling me as the client? What's my first step? What's my first action? Um, to get this ball rolling? Well, the first thing you would have to do is you uh, they would need to contact their lender, okay. their mortgage lender, and they need to, and that's usually through the modification department. And based on the, what they would ask their modification department, because most of the time, most of these people are already in modification and okay. they've probably been denied another modification. So you want to ensure them that they need to go back to the modification department and pretty much most lenders done ask them to either, uh, do you want to do a short sale? Mm -hmm. Lou, Lou it back over. Or do Explain they want that. to do You're dropping or? terms. You're dropping terms, Sharon. This a Lou, a Lou, give us the full term. Well, that means that do they want to just give it to back, just hand the house to the lender okay. and, and they don't want to mess with a short sale. A short sale, you have to take in consideration that most agents need to understand. When you say you're going to do a short sale, rather you do it yourself. And that's one thing. I do my short sales myself. Some people use, there's companies out here that charge maybe 5000 towards the buyer. So there's different, and there's some companies charge 2000 So it just depends. I am a short sale person, so I do them myself. So I walk my clients from point A to point B to C on through the whole process, okay? okay. And with doing that, it's pretty much finding out where they stand be from the get-go. And you have to tell people, they have to be honest with you, what, where, are they, where are they at? What is going on? Okay. Okay, it ain't about looking bad, where you been or anything like that. Where are you at? This and that. Okay. And so based on that, it's just that you have to walk them through what steps to make. And usually the first step to do is if they already been through a modification, they already had this problem, or are they already three to six months behind? Okay. All right. And so they me, go me, through, huh? Let me, let me stop you there. So basically you told the client, hey, no errors, no judgment. I just need to know your full story, bare facts. Yeah. What are we dealing with? That's, That's what you're telling me. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to be honest with them. I mean, one thing, guys, you have to understand, short sales is pretty much like counseling. If you're not wanting to counsel somebody, if you don't want to feel that hurt for them and be there for them and help them get through this, don't take on something just for the money. Right. Because there is, believe me, after you've done all this, there is no money. 
in getting this done, none whatsoever. If you feel like you've been plowed, beat up and everything else, there's no money. It's all about, do you care? Okay. So based on, do you care about this client and do you want to make this work from them? So okay. that's what you have to ensure them that, that you care about them and that you want to make this work for them. Okay. You so want to help them get this done. Perfect. All right. So now I know that I'm coming to you. Yes. I, I work my short sales differently. As I stated, you know, being new in the business, I try to do one. And if you have to upload it to a system and when they send you a request, it's time sensitive. So if you don't get whatever they are requesting uploaded, the lenders are quick to kick it out and say, information not uploaded. Um, I work with an attorney's office. We've been very successful to um, close all of the short sales that I've referred except for one, and it was because of the lender, uh, the investor, just would not accept it. So first, when I get you know someone and I'm working with them and I screen them over the phone and I meet with them I've already introduced them to the attorney's office and it is like Sharon said a counseling session because you're trying to assure them that you're not going to be um, homeless um, most of my transactions is like people refer them and literally sometimes they're three weeks away from foreclosure date Right. And working with the attorney's office and then the attorney, you know, they do this all the time. They write a letter and they're able to stop the, sh the foreclosure to give us an opportunity, but it is a packet and you're only as successful. And I can't say this enough as your seller is willing to complete the package in a timely manner. Okay. The right, lender, let me stop you, Nona. You, you're heading right where I want to go. So Sharon talked about, the first step is the lend your seller contacting their lender and letting them know the situation, finding out if there's a modification, if there's a deed in lieu option or the short sale option, and making a choice. Now, you're talking about working on the package, and the first step of the package is what? The authorization letter? Yes, it, it gives the authorization, and the attorney's office that I work with the young lady already has the when she when i introduce my client to her via email we send her their latest mortgage statement and she already has the packet so she sends the packet to my client and then i stay on my client to say hey get get the, the mitigation represent get the i'm sorry get the attorney's office everything you need they need so that they can call over and they can get assigned to a negotiator um, that's the benefit of working with an attorney's office that has knowledge about doing this. And so a fee is charged to the buyer and it is $39.95. But most people that purchase the short sale have not barked about paying the $39.95 because they know they're getting a great deal for the particular house. Okay. So that's how I work my short sales. I introduce them to the attorney office that's on my team that gets it done. And then they make sure all the documentation is in order. Okay. We have literally stopped a foreclosure the day before the attorney was able to write a letter to the, to the particular mortgage company or they find out who the trustee is. And so a lot of my clients have been saved. They get to stay in the home until the house is sold. So that's kind of the, I, I don't I don't touch it. I don't have to touch my short sale at all. Other than in they requesting documents from my seller and my seller can't get it done. I'm I have driven, did whatever I have to do so they can get their their paperwork turned in in a timely manner. So I don't talk to the negotiator. I don't do any of that. I just do the real estate side of it. Okay, so Dan, this package, give me some details on what's in the package. Well, so basically, it's, you know. it's, uh, it's going to, like they say, it's going to be pretty detailed for the, uh, the homeowners give authorization. Uh, also, uh, uh, just a, a brief overview of what's going on. The hardship letter. Uh, right. And then uh, uh, fill out all the particular documents that particular lender's meeting. It's pretty, pretty thorough. I like Winona, uh, turn it over to my attorney, uh, I let them... Uh, out the I's and cross the T's. What I discovered back then was the, the ball keeps changing on the rules. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, you know, just 
because Bank of America did it this way, they all of a sudden come up and say, well, we don't want to do it that way. And that throws your package out. And I think Sharon and Wano, this is about giving the best care for your client. I, I don't want to make a mistake on a package because I didn't know to change the rules. Uh, these uh, attorneys, they're on top of it. You know, Wells did this this week or Bank of America did this this, uh, this coming two weeks. We don't get th those type of information as realtors when they do that uh, until the last minute say, well, you know, we need this document now, whatever. And that sort of catch you by surprise. So, um, yeah, the and there's nothing short about a short sale. Nothing short about a short sale. It's a long sale. Uh, this it could be, uh, be a year, it, right? You know, it, it's just it's not a uh, like sharing it. Well, I know it's, it's not anything short about that. It's just that the the way the banks work, the way the you would think they would want to get rid of the asset as soon as possible. They just I don't know. Uh, they're just uh, hard. That gives me uh, bring me to a, a a good question. You know. When I was in Chicago, that was a title theory in Texas is a lien theory where trustee has a title and in Chicago, Illinois, the homeowner has the title. Mm. So you always had a lot more time in Illinois. The foreclosure process is a lot longer. Here in Texas, what are we looking at? Is it 60, 90 day? What is the right. typical foreclosure? What, 60 right. to 90 Pretty days? Quick. It's very it's quick. quick. Yeah, it's very so quick here. What advice would you give to someone that's going to venture into doing short sales? You know, like you said, you have to care about your client first and foremost. You don't want to in, in, venture into this market area and not be knowledgeable and your client is has no place to stay. What I would say is refer it to someone that has the knowledge and get the 25% referral fee um, as opposed to, I literally know agents who tried to work them and the sellers ended up in foreclosure. That's to me is, is honestly, I don't want to be in that situation. Care, yes, you want to care about them because once it goes to auction, someone pays it, they have to go. You know, with a short sale, I just actually closed a short sale that was on the market for two years. And like Dan said, you would think the lender would have just wanted to get rid of the asset, but I always think encourage my uh, sellers look if you were paying sixteen hundred dollars but now you can only afford eight hundred dollars every month that you're in that home save that eight hundred dollars um because now you know if it took two years they they got a nice nice little nest egg to go and start over so i follow up with them encourage them hey did you save any stay in the home without paying a mortgage for that time so, you know, what, what better way you find yourself in a bad situation, but then you're able to be blessed. And in some cases, I've had clients get as much as $10,000 moving along. Exactly. It all depends. It all depends on how your loan was structured. Um, the minimum amount that you can get is $3,000. So almost everyone that I've done has walked away with a $3,000 moving allowance. After that client that was in that house for two years, during that time, they gain employment or full-time employment so so many things happened in those two years and she couldn't believe she got to stay for two years we just knew it was gonna uh take it wasn't gonna take that long and it was actually a new house so she had the negative equity in it and mm -hmm. she was like oh my god and she walked away with ten thousand dollar moving a lot Okay, so was it the attorney kept asking for extension 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 to keep it going Next, what please. kept it going Yes, the negotiator kept changing. And as Dan said, it, it constantly changes. And believe it or not, the negotiator change, it seems like you got to start the whole packet all over again. So it, it all depends on the lender and how well their negoti the negotiate, negotiator is. And sometimes negotiators, because they overwork, they don't stay long. And it seems like every time you start over, you have to start over one situation the lender was actually the loan was actually sold during the short sale wow. so then we had to they told us to go back to the old lender and then the old lender say no you have to go to the new lender 
So that took us about three months right there going back and forth to find out who was going to actually administer the short sale uh, because the loan was sold. All right, so I heard both uh, Winona and Dan, you guys use a, a, a law office for that. Sharon, how do you stay on top of all this yourself? How do you, you know, the package, the information, things change, and how are you managing that yourself? Well, one of the things, I have a checklist. So I start out with the checklist, and I pretty much um, walk my clients through everything, uh, basically through the modification. And, the, and most of the lenders will send you the, the, R, the RMA, which is a mortgage assistance, uh, request for mortgage assistance. And they have a checklist that they will send you and things that they want from you which I walk my clients through to get the things. And I also walk my clients through how to fill them out. Cause like Winona is saying, if you don't fill them out correctly, then that's where you miss the whole ball. That's where everything is really uh, messed up from there on out. And okay. because I have, a, um, what do you call it? Um, a VA virtual assistant working with me, I have actually trained someone how to do some of the stuff that, that keeps me from being bottled up with everything. Okay. So that they make sure all the paperwork gets done and how to see it. Now, a lot of the short sales that I do, they go through Equator, which a lot mm -hmm. of them do go through Equator. So going through Equator, it guides you through what they need next and what, and this and that. And like Winona says, it is true. Once the person has, they have changed who's doing what or with the bank, it's like starting back over again because you're having to keep them right. Well, if you already have, I already have it in a loop. So I'm just re sending the same stuff over to the same person. Okay? okay. Now you will get them where the bank sometimes will change hands. It may long, may, it may be this bank having now when you get started and then it may drop over to another bank. So now okay. you're at a dead spot because you can't do nothing about it and you're just waiting. Now the biggest thing is, is keeping your client making those calls for themselves. I per personally teach people how to do this because I feel like that they need to understand what, they, what they're what they in. As the old saying said, you get yourself in it, get yourself out of it, okay? And which helping them get their self out of it is helping them see the whole big picture of everything. Okay. Now, to be honest with you, there is a lot of paperwork and, and when Anna and Dan are telling the truth, the paperwork is, and that's where, depending on where you shut down at, where your client shuts down at. If they're going through distress, uh, they lost a family member, they lost a job, they don't have the money and, and they're minus on different things then yes, I have referred them to, I think Dan had given me one um, attorney office that I referred them to and that will help them out because that some people need someone else doing all that for them. They cannot do that. Okay, okay. we had a question on the floor. What is Equator? Anyone, you know, you Equator guys- is the, Equator is a system that most REOs, short sale lenders use and that's how they work with REOs, with the um, so uh, foreclosures. So a lot of companies put their stuff through Equator, Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo, mostly the big ones. You have found Round Point, some other little ones that may use a servicing company. So it just depends on what you know uh, what they use. Now, when attorneys do it, most inter most attorneys already have these systems to set up the same way that we have. And you go in Equator, they want you do a password, you set yourself up and you just start submitting all the paperwork okay. to as well. I would like to just drop this footnote um, because um, when you're doing the short sale and you're trying to find out what the net that the lender, because the lender is going to tell you what the net is, they're going to tell you how much commission they're going to pay. For, I find that the attorney's office kind of, you know, it takes the stress off of the, for my clients, it's like if you do the short sale, 
my my slogan is that we we want you to win but we want you to be less stressed we don't want you to have to keep repeating things but the attorney has been able to negotiate like if the seller can't pay their home payments i had you know had one has six thousand dollars they owe to the hoa well all of that has to come out of the proceeds and so the attorney is able to negotiate all of that because a lot of them already have relationships you know the particular attorney's office that I worked with, they did a lot of short sales. Um, and so a lot of times they can write a letter and negotiate to get those uh, HOA fees within whatever our net is. You know, so you have the bank says, I want this amount of money. And so then you have to back it out and say, okay, okay, they want this. So how much do we really need to include for realtor commission? Uh, sometimes there's a second mortgage on the house and the second mortgage one that we lost last um, probably april of this year the second mortgage would not agree to accept okay. three thousand dollars and unless the second mortgage agrees with what the first is going to give them and this particular investor yeah, said i don't care <laughs> even though they don't this if it goes into foreclosure the second is not going to get any money and that's right. that's what happened to the house yeah. And the second was just adamant. We want $20,000. We don't want the three. Let it go into foreclosure. So sometimes it just depends on the investor and they don't care. They were writing it off anyway. But for my client, she still got to stay in the house 14 months. I don't know if it ever, um, you know, I don't know when she terminated the listing with me because the, the attorney's office was like, look, we've exhausted 14 months on this. The second does not want to take the, and we had a we had a buyer that hung on for 14 months because they knew they were getting a nice home but at the end of the day that particular family will probably experience a foreclosure so if you're not experienced with short sales and you're just working that first lender <laughs> and that that seller is not honest with you to tell you oh my god we have a, a second mortgage you could be working yourself crazy on an offer and you don't even have enough money to really make the deal work so that would be my caveat to say um if you don't know short sales give it to sharon you refer it to me i'll refer it out and get your referral fee and let somebody who knows how to do it take care of it because what's going to happen can you imagine that seller you're thinking you're helping them but only to find out you really wasn't working at all and they could yeah. still end up in that awful situation all right great point i got two 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 points um Keith, can i make one point too touching in <clears throat> what winona is saying is the, uh, really the truth one thing we have to understand too right now the market is good know the market not everybody has to do a short sale right now right because the market is really good and these people have equity in their home, do your paperwork right, do your comps, know the area, know what you're dealing with, because more than likely, you're going to be able to sell that home right out. There's been a lot of sh times I went into short sales and I turned right around and sold that house. And the people walked away with three, four, one guy walked away with 16000 So just know what you've done. Just because they say they want to do a short sale, they really don't know what a short sale is. Right. And that's the conversation that I have. I have a conversation that, hey, you know, I understand you want to do a short sale. Again, let me go over my listing presentation with you. Let me go over the comps. Let me tell you about the neighborhood. Let me tell you what I can do for you. Okay. And have that conversation because not everything's a short sale. Right. Don't make it a short sale. You know how they say, when don't talk yourself out of something. Don't talk yourself into a short sale because right. a short sale is not a great thing that you want to do because it just prolongs things. But mm -hmm. if these people have equity and you help them get the payoff, not calling on no phone for no payoff, mm -hmm. reaching out to the bank, figuring out exactly what they owe on the property and then determine can you just list that house as a regular sale right right excellent excellent and I then like based on back off of sharing and say one thing that yeah. is true everybody is not you know may not need to do a short sale 
but I will tell you there are tricks to the trade. Um, we had a client had 40,000 equity, but they were, they hadn't done anything. They were just so depressed about their situation. They hadn't done anything. Mm -hmm. So applying for the short sale of allowed us time to sell the home and it not be on the foreclosure report. Mm -hmm. So basically we list, we listed the house for a regular, as the comps said for the market, but the attorney advised this client, go ahead and call your bank, ask them if you can go ahead and start the short sale process. That will give us time to list your house so that we can hopefully get you the equity out. So had we not had the attorney, you know, recommend this, fill out the packet, and luckily the attorney had done work with Bank of America, so she already had the packet, sent it out, and she sent it to a negotiator that was already with Bank of America that she had a relationship with. So that is correct. Like Sharon say, sometimes you can start the process. It doesn't cost you anything to start it, but it gives you time to hopefully help them get some of their equity out of the house. Okay, uh, real quick, I wanted to say, we were getting a request for your different attorneys. You guys have relationships. If, the, if somebody wants to know who you guys use, can they email you or text you directly? Sure. Yes, I put that? my number in the comments already. Right. They are welcome to text me. Okay, so let, let's flip the hat. You're talking with sellers. How are you advising any buyers you have that want to purchase a short sale? You know, that's the education in and of itself. So let's, I want to talk, start with Dan and work my way back. What's the consultation like in that situation? Well, um, I've, I've worked with buyers that want to do that. I guess, you know, they have to be willing to wait because you can't really depend on the closing time. Uh, and sometimes I've had clients wait close to a year and they just decided, no, nah, I don't want to wait this long because mm -hmm. the, the banks are just moving so slow. And uh, they, so if they have to move by three months, don't count on it. I wouldn't do it. Okay. What else are you telling them, Winona? Well, basically, you know, because I have the mitigation fee, I, I, I disclose that up front, and I tell them the steps of how it's going to work. Um, most of the people that have bought much short sales are investors. Mm -hmm. They already know the market. Um, I've only had maybe a few that were going to stay in it, but, you know, they were willing to wait. Um, the shortest time that I've ever had a short sale close and I was just totally amazed but it was not any of your big national banks it was three months we were done closed offer that is like a record mm -hmm. um, most of them take six months nine months like I said I had this one that was almost two years but most of these um, are investors and they're paying cash cash is king mm -hmm. um, so I, I explained to the buyer, if you really want the lender to take you serious and you don't want to keep going back and forth, put your best offer up front. If you know that your your budget to spend is $175, um, I can't tell you whether the bank is going to accept it or not, but it doesn't cost you anything to submit the offer. Um, sometimes it's accepted, and I tell them that they don't pay the mitigation fee. Nobody pays anything. If the home doesn't go to the closing table, nobody gets paid. And so you want to make sure you educate because timeliness, timeliness, timeliness is the success of your short sale. Okay. And nobody wants to continue to work for free. Excellent. Excellent. Sharon, let's talk about, let's say you got that, you know, buyers, first time buyers, you know, repeat buyers think, oh, I'm going to get this great deal with a short sale. You know, they see the price and they think, you know, they, I have an idea what it means. What are you telling that buyer? about a short sale. Well, how are you advising that particular buyer? Well, I first explained to them that a short sale is not short. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just a term that the bank use. It's not a term for the real estate market. Okay. So I let them know that it's not, it's a, it could be six months to nine months deal. Some I'm like, well, no, no, I've had three. I've had one that took on in one month. Again, it's depending on if the agent you have to have a conversation with the listing agent. Where, is, where, where does it stand with that listing? Is it approved short sale? Or is it just considered a short sale? Because it makes a big difference. Because if something is approved, then that means that the agent already has the 
dollar amount that the bank is willing to take. Mm -hmm. And they have already presented a HUD from the title company and everything to the bank, and the bank already knows what their bottom line is. And so if I can get that out of the agent, then I would advise my client if they have time, okay? I mean, I'm not gonna tell somebody that's, that only have two to three weeks or a month to, to, to move, but if someone still has two or three months um, and it's an approved short sale, then yes, I'm gonna advise them to take, you know, take and let's see what we can do with it. What about that buyer that's like, okay, I wanna do a home inspection and all that. How are you telling, how, how are you advising that buyer that's not an investor? What are you telling that person? Well, I'm pretty much letting them know they do have a right to do inspection, mm -hmm. but the bank is not going to take care of nothing. Exactly. I exactly. mean, the inspection is for you to know how much, how much it's going to cost you to get repairs done. Exactly. Because the one thing people have to understand, this property is no longer the seller's property. Right. Okay. It is the bank's property. And once it becomes the bank's property, just like foreclosures, they know nothing about what is wrong with the property. Exactly. exactly. Now, I do get a seller's disclosure from the sellers. He let me know what could be wrong with the house. But when most people are in distress and they're going through something, they don't remember all that. So you have to understand that you have to advise your people that do you have the money to? A short sale is not something that you're going to say, oh, I can go in there and paint the carpet, I'm going to be done with. No, they may have an air conditioner that would been leaking for two years that they couldn't afford to pay for. They may have a heater that don't work no more. So you have to advise these people, do they have the money to be able to do this? Okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you need to tell them, well, let's move on because this is not where, based on what you conversation, pre-qualifying your buyers, based on your conversation, can they get involved into a short sale? Okay, all right. I want to say- I want to just drop one caveat of what I do. Once okay. the lender gives us the approval to participate in the short sale, that's what you're going to get when all the numbers and everything has been reviewed. At that time, that's when I tell my buyer to get an inspection. Once the approval comes in, and the buyer and the seller have to both sign the approval letter and go back to the lender. Once you get that approval to participate in the short sale, you have 30 days to close that home. Okay. Okay. And so in those, in between, that's, I say, okay, contract executed, title company's doing the work, go ahead and get your inspection then. It's gotcha. no sense in getting an inspection at when you first make your offer to the lender. Because it could be three to nine months or whatever, and then you end up not buying it, you will have kind of lost that inspection money. Okay. All right. Well, I definitely want to thank our panelists for your expertise. You guys gave really in-depth information, and I want to encourage anyone on the call that is thinking about jumping into something like this, please reach out to three veterans of the game right here in our office that can give you some tips, guidance. And if it's too much for you, refer it out. Because at the end of the day, we're fiduciaries of everybody we work with. And so our first and foremost concern should be, can we help this person? And can we give them the best help possible? Thanks a bunch, guys. Can I, can I say one more thing that we have to understand? Yes, we are. And we may be looking at a short sale market. I personally think we're going to be more of a, of a foreclosure market. And the reason why I say that is because the fact is, if the market stays as high as it is and it stays a seller's market and there's nothing out here, these banks are going to make that money themselves. Right. That's a good point. You know, I want to get, I want to get a market idea from each of you. And if you can make it in a minute, because I got some other folks waiting to get on and I got to make a few office announcements. So Sharon, you gave us your outlook on the market that you think is going to be more of a foreclosure market than a short sale market. Winona, what are you seeing? I think it's going to be diverse. Um, it just depends on the product. And I have to agree with Sharon. Um, I've been showing foreclosures that the lenders are going in. If the house doesn't need that much work on it, they're putting it, you know, pre -for you saw the house pre-foreclosure then. Now you see it back on the, the market and it's been painted and the carpet is in there. So I don't think we're going to see those 
big deals. And, you know, if the house has good bones and the lender just has to go in and put a little bit in it, they're going to try to make the money themselves. But I do still think um, when this pandemic and all that is over, I think we will have a lot of clients that we're going to have to help um, that are going to be just too stressed out one way or the other, you know. So will there be business? Yes, it's going to be business. It's going to be, you know, just what direct direction you advise them to go in. Okay, Dan, give me your synopsis of the market. Yeah, I, I sort of agree with uh, Sharon and Winona. I think uh, the inventory is so low now. We're talking this time period, and the bank know that as well as we know that. So they might seize that opportunity to, rather than to go drag it through short sales, uh, to go ahead and do the foreclosure so like they've been actually fixing up foreclosures to make them look nice now so uh, <laughs> so uh, they used to didn't do that no so, you go in there and there holes in the wall right. and so i think with the given time and things that but understand just because the majority do that you kind of look at that particular individual was right for them so there could be some cases of short short sales for sure, uh, okay. but hard and fast. I think the majority. Uh, I think they're right. I think it's going to go like that. Take them okay. Sure. okay. Well, hey, I appreciate you guys' time. I definitely appreciate the knowledge you shared, and I encourage everybody in the market center reach out to to the knowledge we have walking right up and down the halls or available on Zoom. Well, you don't even walk up down the hall. Just when I know when they mentioned that second. That second mortgage thing, she is absolutely, absolutely. right. I had some blow up because of that. Right. I just, I don't know. But you're okay. right. A lot of good stuff. Thank you, guys. Let me bring on some more other partners. Thank you for the Thank opportunity. You for participation. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. So let's bring on some of our other participants. Uh, let's bring in, where is Norman Liu? All right. So uh, let me let you guys go. Okay. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. All right, so let's bring in, um, okay, I don't see anybody else here. Oh, there's Norman Lou. Let's bring in Norman Lou. Hey, Norman. Norman, you in? There we go. There you go. How are you, sir? Hey, good morning, everyone. All right, so we have some very exciting information to share with the office. Uh, I, want, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but July was a record-setting month for us. Uh, I'm just going to read off some of the information that Krista provided, and these are all records, records for the office. So, for closed volume in July, a new record for us is 80, we, and we closed $87,472,588 in closed volume in July. The Houston area Keller Williams offices broke 1 billion, and that's with a B, in July. That is awesome. Closed units, we closed over 283 units in July. So um, you guys are doing awesome. And there's some more numbers here I have to report, so bear with me one second. Let me uh, get some things control under control here with my screen. There we go. Okay. Uh, listing sold, 136 listings sold in July. Closed units, 283. Listings sold volume, $40,357,869. Closed GCI, $2,437,364, a new record. And profit share for the month of July, profit share alone, a new record, we paid out $49,000. $522. So you guys are on fire. Keep up the great work. And everything that we're seeing right now is indicating that August is going to be an awesome month as well. So keep up the great work. And Norman Lou has an announcement to make. Um, so I just want to reach out to as many agents as possible. And over the weekend, we sent out a uh, message that we are moving to command compliance. Okay. I already had three classes, and within those three classes, a uh, little over 100 agents. That's pretty good. Uh, 
Okay, so um, let's talk about compliance first and the dates that are important to us. Let me show you my screen here. Let me share the screen. I'll do that one. So the most important date that you have to look for is August the 31st, okay? That is the first day that we can submit for compliance and command, all right? There will be no new submissions in dot loop <laughs> for compliance in dot loop, okay? Anything that was submitted before August the 31st as a test or an accident or whatever will be wiped away. So we can give Maryland's team a clean slate in, you know, um, uh, compliance in command, okay? Here's another important date. If you have submitted anything in dot loop, anything you have until september the 10th to get that in compliance met meaning that if uh, you know uh maryland's team replies back to you we need this document and you send it off get it signed it needs to be done by september the 10th okay if it's not done by september the 10th you're going to have to move it back to command and then submit it in there okay so All right. Those Thank are you much, Norman. Okay. Let's, let's get our famous, our business partners uh, on to the chat. Give me a minute. Let's bring in, uh, let's bring in Dale. Take. Hey, Dale. Hello, Keith. How you doing? Can I'm you good. Quick snapshot. I know our time is short, but can you give us a quick update on what's going on in the in the lender the lender arena? Got it. So uh, we saw rates drop quite a bit the other day. Um, last week uh, we're starting to go down. I did have a thirty year rate on a conventional loan with perfect credit that the borrower uh, qualified for a rate of two point six two five on thirty year fixed rate conventional, which is crazy. Wow. But then today, with some different news that's out, uh, news of a potential um, uh, vaccine for COVID. So the market's kind of responded. It likes that. Unfortunately, that's caused rates to go up. We're a little bit closer to 2.875 with perfect credit right now. The um, thing that I'm noticing a lot is that a lot of the agents that are out there that are not doing a high volume of business and and I'm, I'm not downing you or dogging you in any way but those agents really need to stay in touch with what's going on in the market right now um, I'm getting offers and they're writing contracts with 25 day closes and the market right now is just not conducive to being able to get every aspect of the transaction closed appraisers are taking two weeks minimum Title companies are getting, you know, closing disclosures out the day before or even the morning before a closing. So get in touch with what's going on in the market right now. Houses are selling super fast. The volume of, of transactions that are occurring is just slowing down. It's putting a cog in the wheel and slowing down that process. So get with your lenders before you're making offers and make certain that that's there. Um, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of low ball offers that are coming in and those buyers are missing out on 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 potential deals. Um, when I say deals, they're just not getting the approved uh, contract. So make certain that your buyers know that in this market, in order to to be able to get a contract on a house, you're probably going to have to ask close to asking price. So I know that some of the more experienced agents and the agents that are doing volume right now can, can witness to that, that that's um, a, a thing of the past, that, that offering, you know, 15, 20, $30,000 below asking is, is, is just wasting a lot of paper right now. So you're saying they got one shot, put your best foot shot for it and, uh, from the door. Yeah, and you know, the only way to really make some of those shorter closings and shorter is 30 days, 35 days, is that your buyers need to make certain that they've, they've applied and that they've provided every document to their lender in a very timely manner so that we can get those appraisals orders and, and ordered and we can start moving forward with the process so we're not collecting documents still. So buyers that are prepared to go, 
they could even become pre-qualified or, or I'm sorry, pre-approved, meaning that we've looked at all their documents. That's gonna make their offer look a little bit stronger, but it's also gonna help get us to the finish line faster. Thank you so much, Dale. Thanks for being You are very you're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you guys. All right, let me go to our next participant. Let's bring in Leticia from Celebrity. She's coming on. She'll be joining us in just a minute. I'm waiting. Whichever one of you ladies get your get the audio corrected first can speak. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, all right. Uh, let me text you, my. We got a minute. We got it. We got a. Okay. Got a quick summary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good news. Uh, yesterday, I had four referral. I I called yesterday from Calvary Mall office. So this month I have a new context is for those uh, people who use me for the first time for the referral program, you get taking an uh, uh, extra $25. So it'd be $100 for the turn plan referral if you, I close the sale for the normal home security and still getting the 250 okay? Yeah. All right, so they just need to put your information in the chat box so people can reach out to you. Yeah, okay. All right, thanks, Yu Yi. Okay, Leticia, thanks. You, Leticia, you ready? You not ready? Okay, all right. Well, I, we got two minutes to spare. I appreciate everybody's attendance on the call. And again, we got some great information regarding uh, short sales. Reach out. Thanks, to Leticia, about the class. Tomorrow with Celebrity Class, as a class tomorrow, check it out and uh, go to KWSW25 to check the training schedule. Thanks everybody, I'm gonna let you go. Enjoy your day, make it a successful week. Don't worry about it, that's technology. See you next time, have a great week.